Hello, we are here in uh, Academy Day number five, and this time I have uh, Yura Italchik and uh, Adam Hotovi here with me uh, to speak about uh, Corona a little bit. So, uh, Yura, you've been featured on my blog several times, and it's great to meet you again here. And uh, you too, Adam. Um, you have a great body of work, and uh, uh, everything is so photoreal. So, I would like to ask you, um, you made the switch between V-Ray to Corona, maybe not full-time, but you started to use this render engine quite a lot, so can you tell us a little bit more about it? Why, why are you using it and why you like it so much? Uh, yes, sure. Uh, I started using Corona uh, one year ago in July, when I was like on the very moment I was pretty desperate with a project that I think I wasn't getting the type of quality for the effort that I was spending optimizing it at all. It's not that it wouldn't give me what I wanted, but I felt like I was spending way too much time to get something that I felt should be like automatical. So I was looking into some simpler solution. I actually knew quite a few other renderers. Well, I was using Octane, I was using Maxwell by the summer, but I was looking for something even easier, something that could be easier to switch to because I didn't want to re rebuild the project. Okay. And Corona definitely offered all that by the time because they already had like a converter. So that was like the only feature that converted me to it. I didn't know much about it else. I, I knew it was made by one guy which made me very distrustful of it. That's why I didn't try it earlier. I knew Corona for like a one more year, okay. but you know, simple solutions. And, but I was pretty convinced. The moment I like installed it, and like I showed in the presentation, you just switch the button, you convert the scene, you press the render, and, and you're there. Then you just wait some time and you have your final image. And you don't need to concentrate on anything else. It definitely saves some time. It saves you a lot of patience that you can instead then focus on building your projects. Okay, that's nice. Um, so, uh, picking up on the photo reel uh, style, wh what are your references for uh, creating your work? I've seen you presented the work, uh, a scene recreating a project by Marcy Okogan. So, uh, you're referencing architecture. Do you have uh, some other sources? Uh, photography for photographers that uh, you want to share with us. Yeah. What's, what's your process when you start a project? I mean, what, where do you begin before you start modeling and doing initial renders? Uh, yes, I do. Even though I, my aim for photorealism doesn't stem from like photography, as I mentioned, is it's more from like computer games. It's it's the immersion of the reality that I want to see in the project. So it's not about particle style. The style of the imagery is dictated by architectural photography. And uh, it's mostly by uh, famous photographers like uh, Fernando Guerra from Ultimas Reportagans, who has the kind of style that I'm going for, which is simple and somehow documentative. So it, it's not very like, I don't know, epic like you know it's it's far more simpler and it's much more broad they usually document the architecture in a large series of like many images like 20 and even more images and neither of the image is somehow special but together is the whole body of that describes the project in a way that i think one super powerful image couldn't do and this is something i try to replicate and take a great inspiration from thank you uh adam uh, I got to know you, I think, in Academy Day number three, yes. but obviously I knew about you before that, and uh, uh, you recently made a big change in your personal work life, professional life, uh, uh, dedicating full time to Corona Render, so uh, I think it will be very interesting for the viewers to know what made you make this decision and where, where are you going ahead with this? Uh, okay, uh, I have to say it was kind of natural transition. It didn't happen overnight. It was very well planned for some time because uh, I was working on the Corona for a really, really uh, long time, but only as a, as a side project, as a part time. But since we started a company and uh, I started to have more responsibilities, uh, I, I realized I can't do two things at once. So one of the, uh, one of the things had to go and I see much more potential uh, uh, in a Corona Render in terms of that I can use all of that experience and knowledge which I which uh, I, I have, and I can basically channel it to uh, Corona Render. So, so uh, 
I think that last month I did the last job in visualization, uh, but I hope that I will still do something, but let's say one job per month. But that will be mostly f uh, all around tutorials. That, that will be probably it, yeah. Otherwise, everything was enjoyable so far. Can you can you please tell more information about the the licensing structure you presented because it's not something that's familiar in this business. So, uh, okay, one of the biggest problems which we had uh, was how we should license it and how we should uh, what kind of type of licenses we should give to the artist because there is a traditional box model which I don't like at all because it's. Uh, it force uh, it gives you really uh, it's I have to say it again the the bad thing about the box model is that once per time well, let's say once per twelve months or twenty four months you have to release some kind of bigger upgrade and people have 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 to buy it but our development is really uh, continuous so every time we've got uh, we will produce something new we want to give it to the users straight away. So the box model wasn't an option for us. So we come up with this kind of fair SAS model, which is uh, which will give you the ability to deliver straight away the, the latest version to the users, but it will not have a traditional disadvantages of SAS like Adobe's got it. For example, if you want to cancel uh, this SAS, uh, you can do it straight away. You don't have to pay minimum six months. You don't have to pay one year in advance. And so, so, for example, if you're going for holiday and you will not be using the software, you can just cancel it and buy it uh, again w w once once you're back. And there's no entry fee or anything. You will just pay really strictly just per month. But traditional box model will be available as well. But I wouldn't say it will be uh, the better option, the best, op absolutely the best option is SAS, which we'll offer, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, expected release date, you can't be specific, but y you can like give a time frame so people can know yeah. when to visit the website. Well, I hope, I really hope that we will make everything uh, by uh, November. Uh, I would be pretty happy if, it, if everything will happen uh, in the first week of November. But, you know, we will see what kind of problems we will encounter at the very last moment, as it usually happens in, uh, in development. Okay, so thank you very much for you both, and uh, hope to see you next Academy Day, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.